Very good day to doctor and my fellow friends. My name is Navi Ng. Good day everyone. I'm Ng Yi Ng. Good day everyone. My name is Nadiza Puyang. Good day everyone. My name is Muhammad Amin Shafiq. Good day. My name is Lim Ji Yu. I'm going to present about issue to be resolved. Previous study about the use of ally vibro visually based toxicity biosensor show unfavorable relatively high detection limits. LOD values for determining the toxicity of heavy metals in the environmental water. The problem include the LOD of lead two and cambium two iron concentrations in drinking water, acid limits advocated by WHO. Moreover, high EC50 values and longer response times are involved. These problems are associated with the immobilization methods, which involve air fissure immobilized in alginate microsphere by micro encapsulation and supported with a cellular nitrate membrane. Hence, an alternative immobilization method that involves recombinant E. coli with GFP immobilized on the cellular nitrate membrane and covered with alginate films is possible to form. A more effective toxicity biosensor with lower LOD, lower EC50, and shorter response time. I will present on the significance of this biosensor to resolve issues of heavy metal toxicity. My first point is it has high reproducibility, demonstrated around the range of 3.6 to 5.1 percent RSD. This is due to the protected layer of gelatin alginate membrane on the immobilized GFP E. coli biosensor. This is to prevent the bacteria from extreme pH and changes in temperature. Besides that, it has a long-term stability. The long-term stability profile of immobilized GFP E. coli are demonstrated to be over than 10 weeks. It's maintained 100% stability for the first three weeks and gradually declined. By week 10, it lost its 80% of initial response due to the death of immobilization bacteria. In addition to that, it has a high response in various concentrations of single toxicants. This toxicity biosensor demonstrated high sensitivity towards the metal toxicity compared to microtox uh, toxicity testing in terms of the detention limit LOD and EC50%, especially towards cuprum because of the thiol functional group of the cysteine amino acid possesses a high affinity to bind to cuprum ion. I'm going to present about the application of the biosensor. To solve environmental contamination by heavy metals, development of simple system for monitoring heavy metals pollution is needed. The approach in this article is based on the use of bacteria that are genetically engineered so that a measurable signal is produced when the bacteria are in contact with the bioavailable metal ions. Thus, a fluorescent-based fiber optic toxicity biosensor based on genetically modified E. coli with green fluorescent protein GFP was developed for the evolution of the toxicity of several hazardous heavy metal ions include copper, cadmium, lead, zinc, chromium, cobalt, nickel, silver, and iron. There is also a study that shows this toxicity by a sensor able to detect SDS SDS detection toxicity by sensor fabricated with immobilization of E. coli GFP was found to detect toxicity induced by SDS in tap water, river water and drinking water. Usually SDS is detected via chemical analytical methods through capillary electrophoresis, gas chromatography and HPLC but has drawbacks such as low detection and volatilization rates production of toxic waste during operational analysis, high cost and causing damage to sample during detection process. This study gives an alternative for SDS toxicity detection in water resources, which is comparatively economic, portable and easy to prepare. I will be presenting on the mechanism of the biosensor in the journal. The biosensor used in the journal is immobilized recombinant E. coli on the cellulose nitrate membrane which is coated with alginate and the plasmid which contains the reporter gene GFP. The diagram below indicates the summarized form of the biosensor. 
When the heavy metals enter the E. coli, it causes the activation of the promoter and reporter gene GFP, causing the transcription and translation of the GFP protein, which produces fluorescence and detected by the transducer fiber optic fluorescent spectrophotometer distal probe, which is placed directly above the immobilized membrane, converting it into a detectable wavelength. Moving on to the selectivity of the biosensor, it shows a high response towards copper, cadmium, and lead ions, while low response towards chromium, nickel, cobalt, silver, and iron 3 ions. As for the sensitivity, it is affected by the alginic concentration, as high concentration forms a barrier for the oxygen diffusion to the E. coli itself. And optimum pH was recorded at 7.5, as higher pH causes deprotonation and disarrangement of the GFP chromophore and it shows a higher sensitivity towards copper 2 ion as the thiol functioning group of the cysteine in the GFP has a high affinity towards it. As for the reproducibility, it shows a satisfactory performance over the span of 10 weeks as it still maintains 100% stability in the first 3 weeks. As for the detection limit, the lowest detected was for copper 2 ion at 0.5 nanogram per liter at 2 minutes when compared to other immobilization methods used such as microplate, luminometry, assay and empirometry biosensor. I will be continuing with the improvement that can be performed on the proposed biosensor. As of the journal, compared to the conventional microtox assay, the result for the GFP cell biosensor showed improvements on the detection limit as well as easy fitly in determining the heavy metals in the water. Bacteria cells of proposed E. coli GFP biosensor is used due to the recombinant bacteria cells were found to be effective for the assessment of heavy metal toxicity in water, sediment, and soil samples. However, there are some factors having from E. coli to the fluorescence in toxicant detection like First, the toxicant may be shielded by membrane cell. Second, no reaction takes place between the toxicant and the target cell. Third, the toxicant reacted with functional groups other than the target functional groups inside the bacterial cell. Fourth, toxicants cannot enter cells as reaction occurs between the toxicant and extracellular functional groups. Or, the lastly, the toxicant is modified and does not bring the toxicity effect to the target cell. The resistance mechanisms are organized in operon and are usually found on plasmids carried by the resistant bacteria. The regulatory genes and promoters from the resistance operons can be used to construct promoter to reporter gene fusion for the construction of metal iron biosensor. Hence, in my opinion, E. coli GFP biosensor has the highest sensitivity to copper 2 ion toxicity compared to the other metal ions. Also, E. coli GFP biosensor has the optimum at pH 7.5 for the copper 2 ion as well, and higher sensitivity at 0.8 absorbance of E. coli GFP cell loading. Further research on the activity may be achieved through bioengineering, where to improve fluorescence even in large concentration of heavy metals. In conclusion, the optical biosensor based on GFP E. coli is effective in evaluating single and combined heavy metal toxicity with improved LOD, EC50 and response time. Moreover, it has high reproducibility, repeatability, stability and sensitivity. Hope you enjoy watching this animation video and have a clearer mind towards this biosensor. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye bye.